Battling terrible weather, our Animal X Natural Mystery Unit has had a tough go of it in Victoria. Now it's time to send Dan off to the thylacine's last refuge, Australia's island state, Tasmania. Natalie will stay in Victoria to meet with Michael Moss, the only modern man to have caught the mysterious creature on film. Officially, there hasn't been a thylacine on the mainland for 3,000 years. But then Michael uncovered some secret documents that tell a far different story. These documents, unbelievably, have not been, from my understanding here at the Public Records Office, they have not been filmed before, have not been shown, haven't even been talked about in the public sphere. This is really a world exclusive for Animal X. This information has just uh, been sitting, just lying dormant for decades. And uh, as I said, it's the, um, it's the biggest introduction of native species in this country's history to you know, free range into a national park. According to the documents, the state of Victoria was secretly releasing rare species onto its lands for more than 30 years. Between 1908 and 1940, there were 22 native species that were released free range. The animals were supplied from all over Australia, um, a lot of them from Tasmania. So it was almost like an ark, a Noah's ark. Over 400 animals, not species, animals into the prom and I've tracked the alleged Tasmanian tiger sightings back to this period and you wouldn't find anything on the records as far as any introduction because there would have been a backlash from the farmers and they probably would have defeated the purpose because the farmers would have gone out there and tried to kill it. And while Nat's been investigating those documents in the archives in Victoria, in Tasmania, I've discovered the world's only officially recognised sighting of a modern day thylacine. Hans Narding saw a strange animal in Tasmania's wilderness in the 1980s. As a former state wildlife officer, his report was, and still is regarded, as one of the most credible in recent times. I couldn't believe my eyes first. I became very excited, and, but I was inside my sleeping bag, and uh, I thought, well, what, what do I do now? I would have liked to take a photo of it, but I knew that if I moved, I'd probably disturb it, so I actually in my mind, um, try to register exactly what I saw. Another state wildlife officer, Nick Mooney, was charged with investigating Hans's claim. The whole affair was kept secret for nearly two years. This was really the best quality sighting we've had for decades. What on face value couldn't be argued with. After about 15 months, we, we had no hard evidence and we were still Somewhat op optimistic, the, uh, the report of Hans' stands as a very, very credible report. Large carnivores, be they pumas, be they wolves, be they thylacine, even devils, will use tracks and roads habitually. Mm. So it's highly likely the road junction Hans was on, he simply witnessed a thylacine moving through. Then why is the thylacine still officially considered extinct? Well, there's two types of extinction, biological extinction and functional extinction. Biological extinction means that they're gone forever. Functional extinction means there's still a remnant population, but not enough to sustain the species. So when I say thylacines are, uh, are probably extinct, I still, I still would not be amazed if there were a, f a few there. The only thing that would amaze me is how a few could survive for so long without being found. But Nick's recently been reminded of how hard it can be to track some animals, even when you know they're out there. We have a very serious situation in Tasmania at the moment. Some idiots introduced red foxes here a few years ago and we're struggling to get rid of them. We know we have them in farmland and a few foxes in a huge area are incredibly hard to find. 